This is Moroni Prime yet again. This should be my final review for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord. It has come to my attention through a comment posted to me on YouTube here that I neglected to remember the intermediate mode between separate Dinozords and the Mighty Megazord. That being the Dino Megazord tank. It seems beyond me why I was able to forget such an integral part of the transformation. So I'm making a video specifically for this mode to kind of compensate for my absent-mindedness. So starting out, we have the Mastodon Dinosaur. The transformations for all of these are going to be pretty much the same as with what we did with the Megazord because as I mentioned this is the intermediate mode between the two. We will take the head and set it aside for now. Take the hind legs, angle them up like this. Allow the shoulders to pop up only so far. Then you take and separate the legs. And from there you will angle them diagonally this way. We'll leave it as such for now, and we'll come back to that here in just a moment. Then comes the Triceratops, which is fairly easy. There, that's done. Moving on, we now have the Sabertooth Tiger the Dinosaur. Take the tusks, rotate those up. The legs we will move up to make them even with the head, as if the Sabertooth Tiger was utilizing these front wheels here instead. Take the hind legs, we will fold those in, and the tail, same with the Triceratops, we fold it into the upper back. The Sabertooth Tiger sword is now done. Then we take the Pink Ranger's Pterodactyl Dinosaur. The main thing that we do here is we take the feet off. We set those aside, we'll put those next to the Mastodon head for now. Now, this is a matter of some debate. Some folks have the pterodactyl different ways when attached in the tank mode. Uh, as per the instructions, it attaches just like this. The instructions that came with this particular release of the Megazord. I've seen it where it's done like this. I've seen it where it's on there like this, and I've even seen it where it's just the chest plate itself hanging off the back of the tank. To give it kind of a majestic feel, and to represent all the dinosaurs, I prefer this mode most often. And lastly, the Tyrannosaurus dinosaur. What we will do Take the legs and angle them down one notch in the knee, leaving the thighs in their same position, and make sure the feet are uh, in a position where the toes are all the way forward. That brings the Tyrannosaurus closer to the ground and brings the knee joints down to the level uh, needed to be able to connect with the Sabertooth Tiger and the Triceratops, which we will now connect using the power legs ports it, is what I'm calling them, uh, as we discussed previously. So I'm connecting these two here. And I just wanted to make a little note. I also grew up around Voltron, so it's a bad habit of mine to have the blue leg on the right and the left leg as the yellow one. Uh, the Megazord is in fact the opposite, where the yellow is on the right and the blue is on the left. Um, it's just a little thing. I, I, I guess I might have done it subconsciously. I imagine other people probably do it too. Uh, you know, due to the Sabertooth Tiger being a yellow cat and a leg, it's reminiscent of the you know, yellow lion. Um, moving on then, we take the Mastodon head, or shield, and using that handle that is in the back of the head, 
Uh, this is, again, how the Megazord holds it as a shield. We will take it, and there is a hole in the chest of the Tyrannosaurus. I don't know how well you can see it. It's right up here. Take that handle and insert it as such. Then we angle the Tyrannosaurus head back all the way down. Next, we come around back here, and this is what brings us back to the Mastodon. Take it as though you were attaching them to be the arms and lock it onto the Tyrannosaurus's back. Then come to the front and you'll lock in the sides of the torso or the uh, lower shoulders. Oops, one moment. There we are. Now, the actual main use for the pterodactyl's feet, if you recall these tabs here, the cross piece tabs on the feet, these go into the holes on the mastodon's legs thus forming the barrels of the cannons for the tank mode. And lastly, we will complete it by using the same connectivity as discussed before, these tabs, to go between the mastodon legs here in the upper back. I'll just lock those down in place here. Now, there's no real specific spot on the feet in which to attach the pterodactyl. Some have it down here, some have it way up here. Uh, I like to keep it about here, where the base of the heel meets with the edge of the tail here, the tail section. Um, that way it gives you a good, sturdy, even connectivity, and it's flush with the angle of the chest. We have now... oops. We have now completed the tank mode for the Mighty Megazord, uh, such as it is. It is different than the original release, but it still stays true to the original and the overall feel of it. And I think uh, when presented with the same monsters and enemies, I think it could still get the job done the same way. Uh, one thing I always kind of liked about this is if you notice, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, I may have to zoom out just a hair. Just a moment. Yeah, that's a little better, I suppose. Uh, one thing I've always liked about this is, in this mode, this is the only mode that represents every single dinosaur with their head. You have the saber-toothed tiger head, the triceratops head, the mastodon head, the tyrannosaurus head, and the pterodactyl head. No other mode, so far as I've seen, has all of the uh, dinosaur heads out and exposed. Uh, the one that would come the closest would probably be the uh, Dragon Zord in battle mode, uh, or the Ultra Zord. But then again, you don't see the Pterodactyl's head in either of those modes uh, due to their connectivity, uh, or lack thereof with the Dragon Zord. Uh, it actually just kind of flies around, uh, the Pterodactyl does. Um, one other thing I also kind of like doing is uh, if you really want to display it like this and don't want to risk losing the last accessory, the power sword, you can take it and in between the top of the foot and bottom of the leg, right here there's a seam for the mastodon's legs, insert the edges of the power sword directly into those slots and you have yourself a way to hold the power sword. I think it adds to it just a little bit, it doesn't take away from it too much, uh, and it keeps everything together in one spot. Um, yeah, great figure. Sorry for the absent-mindedness again, this has been Moronai Prime once again, wasting your time.